Hey, good morning, Northern Wisconsin. Sam here with RVI again today. We're gonna to talk today a little bit about our values and the difference in a couple of products that you guys might be familiar with. Really, we're gonna focus on uh, bibs, of course, and why this R value and why the performance of bibs is superior to some other products out there. As you can see, we've got a wall that's been mashed and bibbed. And, you know, the first thing we notice is just how well everything fills the gaps and voids and cracks. Um, walls like this uh, on our job sites are pretty common. We end up with blocking, wiring, plumbing, all these things in the walls that um, cause us a struggle uh, to insulate around real well. Um, and that's where Bibs comes in. So how does our value work and what does it mean? Well, our value is the resistance to heat flow. So it's a measurement of how heat moves through a product. For instance, we can go to the lumber yard and buy a bag of R19 fiberglass batting. Um, how does that compare to the R value of bibs, for instance? It kind of works like this. When they test R value, uh, they put a piece of product in a cavity and they put the same temperature on either side of the cavity. Then they increase the temperature on one side of the cavity and measure that resistance to that flow of heat. So that's the scientific world, that's the laboratory. Um, unfortunately, we don't live in a laboratory, we live in our home, out in the real world. It can be 20 below outside. Of course, it's 70 inside. So how does that heat flow and R value and resistance to heat flow work? So the way that the R value will work with bibs and the reason bibs is superior in its ability to give us the, the R value or the resistance to losing that heat out of our house um, is the density. When we look at fiberglass batting and the R values and the performance associated with that versus bibs, we're really looking at the density of a product. For instance, the density of a fiberglass bat is right around a half a pound a cubic foot. As we start to really dig in and understand the science of insulating and how to protect the outside from the inside and vice versa, we really start to look at density by making the air pockets in this bib system smaller, by making them tighter, we stop the phenomenon of circulation of air within the cavity. Now this happens just because of the temperature differential on both sides of the cavity. So for instance, when you have zero degrees on the exterior and 70 degrees on the interior, naturally we're gonna have warm air on the inside of the cavity rising and colder air on the outside of the cavity falling. All of a sudden, our R19 fiberglass bat is no longer an R19. The R value starts to diminish because of air movement within the cavity. When we talk about bibs, we're about an R4.2 per inch. So in a two by six, typically framed wall and the construction practices in Northern Wisconsin, we begin with an R23. As the temperature differential increases, meaning it's colder outside than inside or hotter outside than inside, we need that insulation to, to maintain the integrity of the R value that we, we started with. So that's where BIBS is superior. Because of its density, uh, we can maintain that R value that we start with. So when we sell you an R23 wall, that's what you're getting. Um, I'm gonna show you some examples of some fiberglass batting uh, which is a very common product that we're using up here, and why we don't, as RVI, use fiberglass batting. Just to kind of give you an idea of what happens with air pockets and air movement within a cap. So we had to make our way over to a wall that in this project had been done previously. So this is a remodel. Um, this is a wall that was done they stripped it off and this is what we can see. So there's a number of things in this wall and back to the reason we won't even use fiberglass batting. Um, right off the bat, you can see um, all the blocking that you saw in the previous part of the video. Really, really hard to fit this fiberglass batting tight around all this blocking and all this framing. Um, as we move over here, you can see framing in the walls, uh, gaps, voids. Um, oh, here's some mechanicals that are exposed in the wall cavity. Now, 
what does this mean? How, why is this so bad uh, for the performance of this product? A couple reasons. Number one, we already know that the density of this product is much less than bibs. So in the event this was installed perfectly, we would have a performance problem. As that temperature outside decreases, uh, we're gonna have more of that convective looping within the cavity. Again, that's the warm air rising on the inside of the cavity and the cold air on the outside falling. But then look at all the gaps and cracks. So not only do we have a low density within the fiberglass, we also have all these voids, all this area behind the drywall that's gonna allow air movement to occur within the cavity. So again, if you can imagine, we're gonna sheet this with drywall. These are all chases for warm air on the inside of the wall to rise up through the cavity. It probably looks like this on the back side of the wall also. How do we know? We don't know. We know that it's hard enough to install on the visible side of the wall to make look good, let alone where we can't see it. So if we have any of this kind of stuff on the outside of the stud cavity, that cold air is channeled and able to fall to the bottom of the cavity. Again, repeating the cycle over and over and over, and ultimately reducing the performance of this product.